This talk will be about the comparison between the images of the Greek operator and its instances well. The concepts that will appear in this talk will be the Greek graphs, the Greek graphs, the Greek operator, and its powers, and octahedral graphs. The definitions of click and click graphs were the ones given by Kerr, and the click operator is the function k that assigns to each graph g its click graph k of g. And that format for the letter g indicates the class of all graphs. And the power k to the n of the click operator is the composition of k n times. And the n iterate click graph g is the graph k to the n of g. Then k of g is the class of the graphs, k squared of g is the set and the set of iterated the graphs and so on. One can wonder what graphs are in these classes. Let us start with the graphs. We have the classic uh, theorem by Roberts and Spencer which says that graph g is a big graph if and only if there exists a healthy family F of complete sets of G which cover the edges of G. Remember that a family is healthy when pairwise intersecting sets of the family have a common element and covering the edges of the graph means that for any edge of the graph there is a complete of the family having that uh, edge. For example, let's consider this graph. This graph is a click graph, and we could use these sets 1, 2, 4, 1, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 1, 4, 5, and 2, 6 to cover all the edges of the graph. And it is not difficult to see that this is a single family, and that will confirm that the graph is a click graph. But we don't have a similar characterization for any other class of iterated click graphs. And we have even these questions. Is k of g equal to k squared of g? That is the main question of this presentation. Well, let's think about what happens if it is true. By simple operations, one could see that k q of g would also equal the class of clean graphs. And then one could use inductive arguments to prove that k to the n of g is equal to k of g for any n greater than or equal to 1. And what about if it is false? Then we have the following paper by Marisa Maipaisor and Joao Maitanis, which says that any counter example of a graph in k of g minus k squared of g must have at least 8 vertices. This was even the subject of a talk uh, on this workshop in 2002 here in Brazil. Well, first let's say that it is, uh, we can determine that the graph is in k squared of g if the intersection between k of g and the pre image of g under the click operator is different from the empty set that can be clearly seen with, in this picture for the case of 2 graph G and H, for which K is equal to H equals G. Well, uh, the, the reality is that uh, the quality K of G equal to K squared of G is false, and then we will have to try to find a counter example. Well, in order to find that counter example, Let's uh, remember that the graph is click heli if the family of clicks satisfy the heli property, which is heli. That means uh, that click heli graphs are click graphs immediately, it's an immediate conclusion from Roberts and Spencer's characterization. That also means that the counter example cannot be the click graph of a click heli graph. That would contradict what I said in the previous slide. One of the classical examples of a graph that is not big heavy is the three sum. But unfortunately, when one calculates the big graph of this graph, 
will get paid for, and it doesn't provide a counterexample of a graph in k, of k squared of g, k of g minus k squared of g. But if we add some edges to the graph, things get more interesting. Uh, we have these graphs that if you, we look with attention to them, all the vertices in these graphs are adjacent to all the other vertices except one. That means that these graphs are the complement of the joint copies of K2. And since this one is the planar immersion of the octahedron, this class of graphs are called octahedral graphs. What I will prove is that this could be our counterexample of a graph in k of g minus k squared of g. And how to prove it? Because what I said before, that can be proved by establishing that k of g intersection k minus 1, O4, that intersection is empty. Uh, I forgot to say that, well, the O's there are because of the word of octahedron. Well, we need then to find the pre-image of O4 under the click operator, and before we need the following results that say for a graph G, all the graphs in K minus 1 of G are the intersection graphs of heavy and separating family of complete of G covering all the its edges. Remember that the family is separating where for all UP elements there is a set of the family that has U but does not contain B. If we go back to the example of the click graph, we can see that this family is not separating. For example, 1 is never found separated from 4. But we are we add some new <coughs> sets, the family becomes separating, and when we compute the intersection graph of this new family, we get a graph in the pre-image of this graph by the click operator. And the, graph, and the picture also shows how the clicks of this graph correspond to the vertices of this graph. Well, after saying that, the first thing I prove is that any graph such that k of g equals O4 must have O3 as an induced subgraph. The proof is as follows. We take a family F that is heavy separating, that is formed by complex of O4 and that covers all its edges, and such that the intersection graph of F equals G by the characterization before. We can remove members of F in such a way that the edges of the graph can still be covered. We must do it, must do it as many times as possible until we get a subfamily F prime. For this family F prime, we have the following facts: any member of this family has cardinality four, which is the maximum we can have because all clicks of O4 have uh, four vertices. And if we take any two members of the family, the cardinality of the intersection is even. Well, the third fact is the most essential. It says that if A, B, C, D is a member of the family, then A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime is also in the family. What this means? We use the prime symbol to indicate the vertices uh, for example, A prime is the only vertex that A, A, A is not adjacent to, that I said before when we introduced the octahedral graph. The proof of that fact is by contradiction. We suppose that A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime is not a, a member of the family F prime, then the intersection of A, B, C, D with any other member of the family is not zero. But as we saw from fact 2, those cardinalities are even, then we conclude that it is at most 2. But then we consider a complete that covers the edge A prime, B prime, 
it has to be a private crime CD so that this is satisfied. <coughs> Similarly, we consider a complete scar in the edge A prime, C prime, and A prime, B prime, we count that all these sets are in F prime. But what happens here is that if we consider these three sets and A, B, C, D, we have pairwise intersecting sets without a common element. That contradicts that the family was heavy, and then we can be sure that A prime, B prime, C prime, B prime is really in F prime. Then we can always take three <coughs> intersecting members of the family F prime, and by fact three we can take the set of, the, of its opposites, and they can induce O3 in the intersection graph that equal G. Now, after the proof, let's take any graph G <coughs> such that K of G equals O4, and a set B prime inducing. All three. For each click of this subgraph, we will take a click of the whole graph containing it. That way, as the clicks of all three are eight, <coughs> we get all eight clicks for the whole graph. But G is such that K of G is all four, that has eight vertices. Then, these eight clicks are all the clicks of G. And from that fact, we can derive some very useful properties. For example, that any vertex of the graph G is adjacent to at least one vertex of B prime, but is not adjacent to all the vertices of B prime. And if two vertices have the same neighbors in B prime, they will be twin vertices. That is, they will have the same neighborhood in the whole graph. Now let's see how can this be used to prove that k minus 1 of O4 intersection k of g. I'm oh, sorry, can I see the previous slide? Oh, one minute. <coughs> <coughs> Thank you. Well, let's see how this can be used to prove that k minus 1 of O4 intersection k of g is the empty set that, let's remember, is what we need to prove that. O4 is the counterexample we are looking for. We suppose by contradiction that G is a graph in the intersection. Then on one side we can take a heavy edge cover by complete of the graph and we, and we can take B prime inducing the subgraph O3. Let's use those names for the vertices. For each click of this subgraph, we take a vertex B sub X, Y, Z that must be in each member of F containing X, Y, X, Z, and Y, Z. Why such a vertex exists? Because the family is heavy. It is interesting to note that this <coughs> class of vertices are adjacent when their subscripts share two vertices. For example, base of A, B, C and base of A, B, C prime are neighbors because, because both are in each complete of F tabbing the edge A, B. Now we introduce the set C of F, B prime consisting of the clip of the subgraph O3 such that there exists a member of the family F containing that clip. In principle, there could be many type of sets that say of F B prime could equal. Here is a picture with many of the cases. For example, a triangle if, if the set has only one click, a rhombus, a bow, an opposite curve, an umbrella, fan, castle, round, worm, rhombic circle. And there are some more. For example, sets that contain one castle. You see one castle? and some more clips. Now let's see if C of F prime can equal some of these sets, really. For example, let's suppose that C of F B prime turned out to be this castle. In that case, we could take members of the family containing these sets, but if we remember how B sub A prime B C was defined, 
then this complete must also have the vertex. What that means? As these sets are complete, we can see that B sub A prime BC is adjacent to all the vertices of A prime. A, A prime, B, B prime, C, C prime. And we saw in the slide that was pictured by Miguel that that is impossible. And then we have a contradiction. So C of A, B prime cannot contain a castle. How the proof continues? We have to prove that C of A B prime cannot equal anything else. <coughs> and the most suitable way to do it is by considering all the cases according to an increasing order for the cardinality of C of A B prime. And it helps always to try to identify two invertices. To clarify what, that, what this means, uh, I propose to see a simplified version of the end of the proof. Suppose that we already know that C of A prime cannot contain neither one element nor more elements. Then the only possibility is that say C of A prime is the empty set. And suppose that we have already found that B sub A B C is a twin of A. Then what we do is take B prime, remove A, and put instead B sub A B C. As these vertices are twins, the subgraph induced by this new set B double prime will still be O3. But what happens to this case? We have that because of the definition of B, B sub A B C that the set B sub A, B C, B C belongs to C of F, B double prime. But we have supposed, we have supposedly proved that this class of sets could only be empty. And this is the final contradiction that proves that O4 is the counter example we were looking for. Well, I would like to end the presentation by introducing some other questions. It is known and it is not difficult to prove that the iterated big graphs of O3 are all octahedral and low in complexity. That is, O3 is a big divergence graph. It is quite tempting to conjecture that K to the end of O3 is a counterexample for a graph in K to the end of G minus k n plus 1 of g. But it is a question, nobody knows. And we can also consider the class of the intersection for n between 1 to infinity of the classes k to the n of g. The question would be, what are all the graphs in these classes? In the, gra in the class. That's all.